We're gonna try to catch some calves. I pasta's great. Well, maybe he's And the adults should not be able to squeeze through. Results are already showing the next day. Hey guys, Dusty Baker. Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Simmers Bison. Marissa's in here with me. We're gonna do something challenge today. We've got a little liner for an old feeder. You can see Dunbar got a hold of it back in the day. We're gonna use our hydro bed. Here's our creep gate. Built this last year to catch some calves at the original place at Mom Kevin's. We're gonna use the hydro bed to lift it up, haul it down there. Marissa and I are gonna set it up. We've got a mixture of feed. We're gonna try to catch some calves. Here's how we're gonna do it. Yep, your far side needs to be over here. It's easy to pick up. Yeah, that's about that's about right. You can come back some more, actually. Yeah, I put it parked. Here it is. Okay, peaches. Get. Yeah. I gotta lower this. Just a little bit, son. Loosen these chains. Hey, get back. This gate's gonna be open. It'll look kind of like this. I'll slide this Fits perfectly right there. Coastal fit right here. So we can get So if there's any pushback, it'll be this way. Hit like this. Which makes me feel a little bit better. That this is 12 foot. Our gate is only 8 foot. So because this is bigger, it'd be harder for them to get through here anyway. So I think this will work. Hey uh One more up here. Good kind of tight. This, this gate doesn't have to be. Woo. Just right, barely. Two more chain links. All right, so more. I'm gonna crawl through here. Loop there, loop there. Chain here, chain here. Point it on them. It'll just sit. If you point it on them, standing there in front of the gate. Yeah. This thing will go off a lot. True. So you're pointing it over I'm here. Just at an angle. I want to see who comes in here first. So let's grab this. I didn't know you were gonna throw it. Sorry. This one's seen better days, it looks like. It's, it's been Dunbar. Dunbar? Yeah. It's been Dunbar for sure. Well, maybe you need to scoot it back this way a little bit to catch. To catch what? The calves or which ones are coming in. Oh yeah. Got uh, now we don't. If we're feeding our weaning calves, we feed them our. It's like a blend. It's a mixture of different feeds that we feed them. So I threw a little bit of that in there, and our 14% cattle cubes that we always feed them, and the calves will eat them too, along with the adults. So they're gonna want in here, and. Uh, I already see the guilty ones either jump fences or that's the jumper there so 54 they're gonna want in here but hopefully 
It works. We've seen the calves go through it. I haven't seen adults go through it. But they're going to have to get used to this. Wanting in here, so it'll be good to have it on camera at least. Know what's going on. So this is just a liner from an old feeder. Dunbar tore it up. Um, this is in the early days, basically, when we had these. And I don't have any spare feeders right now. Actual feed bunks, feed troughs. They're pretty expensive, and you have to buy the heavy-duty ones for bison. They're like $250 plus locally, and you have to get the heavy-duty metal ones, not these ones that are lined with this. So instead of going buying one, we can just use this. But the idea, basically, is to get the calves to come over here, come through that creek gate, and start eating food on their own so Marissa and I can bring the food in here on a daily once they start coming in here. Ooh. And then the idea is to catch them. And we may have to come down here and set some panels up or something to catch them. So, or get them lured to come all the way to the ranch, all the way to the barn. The boys are being boys. So the next thing will be who's coming through. Yeah, and the adults should not be able to squeeze through this. If adult can get under that then. Yeah. So you're targeting, shoot, that guy might not even be able to. Now some of them big ones are gonna have to duck under. Hey, Hoss. Once they figure it out. But bison typically, bison, bison typically don't like doing, going under or down or something up above them. That they don't like to go under stuff. So. I think Hoss disagrees. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he's agreeing. He's just being Hoss. You gonna whip up on that rock, boy? He, yeah, he makes me a little. He makes me a little nervous. You have another caribou at home. Hey, I wasn't recording any of that. Can you can you retake nope. all of it? No more. All forty seven minutes. I was out of storage. It's the worst, I tell you. Yeah. Hate it when that happens. If you're out of storage, it tells you that before you start filming. Well, sometimes it doesn't. Pretty sure it does. Uh, not all the time. Sometimes, you know, you just click the buttons to make sure that it's going or think you're, you know, getting it going. Mm -hmm. You're driving. <sighs> it's only happened a handful of times. Not great moments in the book, you know? Hey, what are you doing in here? Holding the fort down? So later that evening, I happened to still be around the Ponderosa, and I thought, oh man, I really want to look down there and see if those calves are starting to come in there. Well, surely enough, I looked, and so I had to go drive down there to see how many calves and what calves actually came through the gate that Marissa and I set up. I was actually surprised to see that we had about six of these calves already coming through within six hours of the day of us installing this creeper gate which was a good sign and in case i didn't mention it one of the reasons that we're doing this is it's just time to catch our calves they've been on these moms long enough this is the longest date that we've ever had these calves on their mamas we typically wean at six or seven months which is in the fall more than likely be november december but I wanted to try something different this year and leave the calves on a little bit longer to see if they can still get those great nutrients from their mom. But now the challenge is we're about a month away from working on our animals and I really want to get these calves caught and start the weaning process before we actually do the working here in about a month. Now it's just a matter of time of seeing how many calves will actually come into this area of pasture two through that creeper gate and then what we'll probably have to do is set panels up, bring the trailer down here, and try to catch them that way. And hopefully, we can bait them in enough over and over. It becomes regular to them, and then we can catch them. 
get them up to the corral and start the weaning process. Because what I'm trying to do is avoid bringing the whole herd up, having to catch them, gate cut them, and separate the calves off the moms. That's more of a challenge. And we're trying to avoid all that because when we do work them, we'll have to do that in a month. And so I'm trying to avoid instead of doing it twice, we can do it only once. Some of them got caught. I see some of them didn't. Or maybe she went in there. Or he went in there. She went in there, maybe. I don't know if all of them got caught. There's a couple more out here. <laughs> but there's definitely one, two, three, four, five, six in here. At least caught six in here. So... And then there's a couple more out here that I think there's one, two right there that may have came in. I don't know. Maybe they already did come in, but I just happened to look down on the pasture and these are the ones I saw. So that's a good sign that it's already working within the first couple hours or in the first day. It's already working. So that's a good thing. Little munchkins. To be continued. <laughs> did you get her yes yes I did yes I did job 352 it's just Jackie she's not mean but I know it's your natural instinct she's still watching you Jackie I keep saying she it's a he not liking it. It's not liking you. <laughs> Want some feed, that's for sure. Tails up. That's hilarious. Little bull. There is some grass growing down here. Uh, some winter grass. And uh, over here, I have a cover crop planted in pasture too. But, um... They're, uh, they're getting after this winter grass. They've already grazed it down some. I figured they would. But I'm sure they'll go back to mom here pretty soon once we, we get out of there. There's the 351 bull. He's, he is a tank. That's the one I did call tank. Um, he's a big boy. I think he weighed 430 at a weaning weight, which is one of the biggest calves we've ever had. A big Joe baby. And he's still watching Jackie out there. In case some of you missed the last video, we did one of my favorite things to do. We did a prescribed burn and man, it went so awesome. We had the crew out and everything. Results are already showing the next day. And I was able to go take a look and see what the herd was up to. Post burn checkup right here. What are you doing, girl? Big Joe, what are you doing down here? Come to inspect? No cubes today. Look at him, they already found a new waller. <laughs> there in the ash I guarantee you another female comes by and does that or Haas will oh, somebody else is wallering in the ash
They're gonna come through and inspect. Alright guys, we had such a fun time and so thankful for the crew. It was such an effective burn. I'm very happy and pleased with the way it went. So we had a couple of times where it got out. That's just because the blackberry bushes got so hot and had so much heat that we didn't do enough back burning. Basically, what that is, is I can show you. We had a south wind, which was fine, but we had to burn on the north side and bring it back slowly to get most of the brush. And then once we felt comfortable, there was enough black on the north side, which is where the wind was blowing, that direction, we could come and light on the back side of this. And once we did that, it's like a it's like a loaded gun because it just blew up once it hit the fuel and it just bounced from bush to bush basically from blackberry to blackberry and uh i mean it was just so fast it was like a train came through As you can see that doesn't bother the bison there's something unique about these animals with fire there's fire right there still burning a little log and christy is hanging out pretty interesting how these bison respond to fire and ash and stuff like that it's pretty it's pretty neat so i'm hanging out here trying to cut off some of this wind but big joe's he's back here waiting on me he's like are you gonna give me some cubes today or not cubes was yesterday you got cubes yesterday you got to watch the fire if some people ask why prescribed burn why are you doing this okay so i'm gonna show you here so two summers ago he's gonna make me get in my truck i'll talk to you from in here so two summers ago and last summer we started spraying but this is the only thing that we do spray is these blackberry bushes okay because they're invasive and that what that means is they'll take over your pasture if they have no management whatsoever they'll completely take over what they do is they'll take up a lot of your grazing and what we're going to do is we're going to see the results of this. So what we did was we sprayed two summers in a row and we hammered these blackberry bushes. And so this is an area where it got really hot right in here. And the only way to really, really, really get rid of it is by spraying them. And we used a product called Remedy. And that's a direct spot spraying. We go out and we drive around just spraying the blackberry bushes intently directly on them nothing else we're not spraying anything else and so when we did that uh it, it killed them and so what we did was we after that we let it die basically over time let it dry out and over summer i mean gosh lee this is march and we've let it really really dry out and die now it's prescribed burn season and so we started to burn it was time to basically light light the fuel we waited for the right time and I had to get everybody together and stuff. Here's the main point. The reason why we did this, what we're going to do is we're going to see the results of this very soon. We're about to hit the growing season. We're in still an early spring and then May, what we want to see is the native grasses come up. Will they come up this year? I don't know. But here's what's great. I will give the blackberries one benefit. The bison, the deer, nothing could reach underneath the blackberry bushes so what that means is there's a lot of organic matter under those blackberry bushes there's a lot of a lot of nutrients under those blackberry bushes it just needed a spark basically to get that seed bank that's sitting in there to open up and let everything out what we've done and what we're going to continue to do on this plate on this spot right here this acre or two when you clear the blackberries out what you're doing is open up space for more grazing because they can't graze in this. There's no way. There's no grazing near it at all. And if you've ever been up to these blackberry bushes, they are the most thorny bush I've ever been around. You think green briar is bad? These guys are really, really bad. What we'll, We still need to come through here and trim out a lot of the trees, but we've got three or four huge pecan trees up here, which is super awesome that made that survive the fire and we knew it. What are you doing? What's going on here? The goal was of this whole thing was to get more grazing ground and take care of our pastures for our bison. When we got the property, it was, it was in that position where things were taken over, such as this plant, the blackberries. And they're really good to eat, but other than that, they're not great. 
okay? And that's only one time a year they produce those awesome berries. The Big Joe herd will be moved to the burn unit and we'll start our uh, grazing rotational stuff. But, and we'll give this place some time for recovery is what we're gonna do. And what we'll start to see is the regrowth of plants that have been setting in there, seeds that have been setting there for years. You couldn't see through this. It's probably been eight plus years before we could see through here. And as soon as that burn went through, we could, I could see other people on the other side of the opposite side of where we were. You couldn't see through here to the other side. It's an amazing thing. So that's why we use prescribed burn because it's a cleanliness thing. It gets rid of all the bad stuff without spraying. It's a, it's a natural way of doing things. You don't have to spend money on spraying. And we did spray the blackberry bushes. That's the only way to get rid of them. We can get rid of the blackberry bushes now. When you take that top surface layer of organic matter and you spark it up a little bit, you get a little action, basically, a lot of good things can happen and that's what we're waiting on. And so with the little rainfall that we typically get in the spring, hopefully, this place will be a whole new world. And guess who's going to come get to it? These guys. That's what they've done for hundreds of years. When the natives would set the rangeland on fire, guess who would show up? They didn't have to chase the bison, right? The Plains Indians. They would come to them. So fire has been used for hundreds of years. And it's a great tool. It's a great technique to really manage the landscape and manage your native plants. It's basically a cheap and the most effective way to do it. And you've got to remove the bad stuff sometimes to make room for the good stuff. And we're trying to make room for the good stuff. And there's no greater animal that can make a major difference than these guys right here. Love burning. And it's not just for fun. There's a lot of good benefits to it. Even though part of the country, not far from us, is on fire, basically, prescribed burning can avoid big fires. And they're going through some lot of tough times out in Texas right now. And uh, I've got some friends out there, and we've been checking on them and stuff. So a lot of bad stuff happening out in Texas right now. And uh, we're lucky that we can do prescribed burning here. And uh, prescribed burning can... You know, things happen, wildfires get started, but the use of prescribed burning can avoid large fires and large outbreaks. And uh, some unfortunate things happen sometimes, right? I can't imagine what those guys are going through out in West Texas. Families, ranches, homes being destroyed in, in minutes. And uh, a lot of acres burned out there. Prescribed burning can help avoid those situations, but not all the time, not all the time, okay? but it can be a great tool. <laughs> Jackie's getting ran out of pasture. I wanna thank my crew yesterday, they did an awesome job. Jerry, Eli, Marissa, Mud, Mark, Kevin, Keith, brought an extra tank and it was so good. Can't wait to see the results of this. We'll keep you updated so you guys can see why we prescribe burn. I can't wait, it's gonna be so awesome and exciting to see the change of this landscape here in the next couple of months. Thank you guys for watching. We're gonna keep on bison ranching. See you guys soon.